Hello and welcome to Diabetes Connections in the News. I'm Stacey Sims and these are the top diabetes stories and headlines of the past seven days. As always, I'm going to link up my sources in the Facebook comments where we are live and in the show notes at diabetes-connections.com when this airs as a podcast so you can read more if you want on your own schedule. In the News is brought to you by Real Good Foods. Find their entree bowls and all of their great products in your local grocery store, Target, or Costco. Our top story, Lilly announces a big price change on some insulins. Starting this January, the cash price of insulin Lysepro goes down 40%. Lysepro is identical to Humalog. The price on Humalog is not changing. Lilly says one in three prescriptions for their mealtime insulin is for insulin Lysepro. Now, I asked Lilly why now and what about Humalog? And I'll put my Q&A with them in the show notes. You'll be able to read them at diabetes-connections.com. I'm also going to put them in the Facebook group. Their answers were vague, although one interesting point, they claim these programs have lowered the monthly out-of-pocket cost of a prescription for Lilly insulin to $28, a decrease, they say, of 27% over the past four years. The bottom line here is you still have to do the work. Your pharmacist can substitute life Pro for Humalog or the other way around. However, the prescription is written, make sure you ask them to check which is cheaper with your insurance, with a coupon, or with the cash price. Yes, it's a lot of work, but with all of these options, you really do have to figure out what is best for you. Adults over 40 with type 1 are four times more likely to be hospitalized with COVID-19 than younger people. New study in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism says this, and this study looked at thousands of people with type 1 from April 2020 to March of 2020. 2021. So it's worth noting that the recent Delta wave is not included here. Hospitalization here means inpatient or ICU, not emergency room. And this is where it gets really interesting. They adjust it for sex, race and ethnicity, insurance type, comorbidities, and A1C. It was being over 40 that still increased the odds. Now, that's not to say A1C didn't matter. The likelihood for hospitalization was higher for all ages with a higher A1C. Also interesting, there was no significant difference for adverse outcomes between the age groups, but they grouped together DKA, severe hypoglycemia, and death as the adverse outcomes here. So a little muddy. Using an insulin pump may decrease the risk of diabetic retinopathy in younger people with type 1. These researchers looked at almost 2,000 patients under the age of 21 and found, after adjusting for race and ethnicity, insurance status, diabetes duration, and A1C, patients with pumps had a 57% decreased risk for retinopathy. The thinking here is that it's about less variability in blood glucose. However, there were disparities in terms of access to pumps, with pump users more likely to be white and have private or commercial insurance. Very early on, but potentially some big news out of China, this is a study called the DREAM study. It's a phase three clinical trial of a medication called dorzagliatin. This is for people with type two. It's a small study, big results though. After one year, 65% of the 69 patients were in remission. That generally means A1C is under 6.5 with no glucose lowering medication although the exact definition of remission was not given here. These findings were presented at a recent Biomed conference in China. Novo Nordisk shareholders say pants on fire to the insulin maker and get a $100 million settlement. Well, what happened? Novo allegedly told investors not to worry about insulin pricing pressures from lawmakers and patient groups that they'd still make plenty of money. But the investors disagreed, saying other insulin makers were warning their investors that profits could fall. Now, this lawsuit has nothing to do with any benefit to patients, at least as I read it. It was all about investors who were actually asking for $1.7 billion with a B. Novo agreed to the smaller deal, saying they just wanted to avoid the burden of litigation no admission of wrongdoing. Well, this one is from last week, but I want to make sure you've seen this. This is a voluntary glucagon recall. Lilly is recalling a specific lot from their red box emergency kit. It is lot D 
239382D. So please check. Yes, I know that went by quickly. I'm putting it in the show notes and at the episode homepage. The problem here is that somebody reported the vial of glucagon was in liquid form instead of powder, which can mean the glucagon is not going to work well in an emergency. If you got this lot, bring it back to the pharmacy or call Lily. Again, info in the link and show notes. You might have seen the headline on this one. If you can't fit into the jeans you wore at age 21, you're at risk of developing type 2 diabetes. I dug a little deeper on this very small study. First, these people weren't even overweight. They did have type 2. As part of the study, they managed to lose fat. The researchers said their diabetes was put into remission. They all followed a weight loss program of a low-calorie liquid diet for two weeks. Now, remember, these were not overweight people. So two weeks, 800 calories a day. And they did this three times until they lost 10 to 15% of their body fat. The researchers say this demonstrates very clearly that diabetes is not caused by obesity, but by being too heavy for your own body. What does that mean? And what does it have to do with the headline about genes at age 21? And now what happens to these poor people who were slurping 800 calories a day and are now back to their normal lives? I'm really hoping I missed something big on this one. I will continue to follow it, but... That just sounded odd. Much more to come, but first, I want to tell you about one of our great sponsors who helps make Diabetes Connections possible. Real Good Foods, where the mission is be real good. They make nutritious foods, grain-free, high in protein, never added sugar, real ingredients. The new entree bowls are terrific. There's a chicken burrito. There's a cauliflower mash and braised beef uh, bowl. Uh, the lemon chicken, the lasagna, these are really good and they keep adding to the menu line. You can buy them online or find a store near you with their locator right on the website. And back to the news, we've got another one of those through the skin glucose monitors to tell you about. No Labs debuted its No You device, which is very small, fits into your pocket and is powered by what they call BioRFID technology. It emits radio waves to measure specific molecular signatures in the blood through the skin. They've also also got U-Band. We told you about this a couple of weeks ago, which is a bracelet that does the same thing. Do they work? Well, according to a 2018 study, 97% of the U-Band's readings were within 15% of the values calculated by the Abbott Libre. It wasn't a clinical trial. Those are starting this year. And finally, maybe the most glamorous photo ever to feature an insulin pump. Model Lila Moss, daughter of supermodel Kate Moss, walked the Fendi Versace runway at Milan's Fashion Week with her Omnipod very visible. Lila Moss has type 1, and while the family has never really mentioned it publicly, she's been photographed with her pod on before. Lots of write-ups about this. Great to see the representation. And please join me wherever you get podcasts for our next episode. The one out right now is with Marjorie's Fund, helping people survive diabetes in countries with few resources. And next week, we're featuring the folks behind the upcoming Pay or Die film about insulin access. Bit of a longer in the news episode this week, but there were so many headlines to get to. So I appreciate you sticking around. And if you like it, please share it. Thank you so much for joining me. And I will see you back here soon.